In this part, we're going to work on giving some sort of visual indication when an entity is damaged. To do this, we're going to create a particle manager core component. The particle manager core component is basically just a component that holds a bunch of useful functions to help us spawn particles more easily. But before we get started, let's quickly look at another bug that has somehow managed to sneak through. If we go ahead and run to the left over here and jump into this little gap, and we are in the crouching state, if we attack, nothing happens. But if we jump, you can see our character gets stuck. Now, I feel like I fixed this bug before, I don't know why it's still here, but, but just in case you're having the same issue, let's go ahead and fix that quickly. So let's go ahead and open up our player grounded state. So player, player states, super states, player grounded state. So in this class, if we go ahead and scroll down to our logic update function, we have a block of if else if statements. You can see that our first check is to see if we have any combat input. And over here, you can see that we're checking to make sure that we're not touching the ceiling. So this is what stops us from being able to attack while crouched down in that tight space. You can see over here for the transition to the jump state, we do not have that check. So to fix this bug, all we need to do is add that over here. So we can say, and not is touching ceiling. And while we're here, we can see at the top, I have a little warning over here, and it's just saying that uh, the jump input variable name does not match our rules. And that's because it is a private variable with a capital first letter. So let's go ahead and hit F2 on that and just fix it. Okay, and with that fixed, let's go ahead and test to make sure the problem is fixed. Let's go ahead and run the game. And when we run up here, we can no longer jump. Perfect. Okay, let's move on. Let's go ahead and create the particle manager core component. We'll store this in our core, core components folder. Right click, hit create, C sharp script, and we'll just call it particle manager. Let's go ahead and open that up and we can get rid of all the pre-generated code. Our using statements, we can get rid of everything other than the using Unity engine. Now, because this is a core component, we're going to inherit from core component instead of mono behavior. And now let's quickly discuss how the particle manager is going to work. The particle manager is essentially a collection of functions that allow us to spawn particles on the entity with various other parameters, such as rotation and position. If we wanted, we could even define specific points where particles could be spawned without having to pass in a position. Like say we wanted to spawn particles at the feet of the player or behind the player or at the head, you get the point. So the particle manager does not hold any particle data itself. It merely facilitates spawning particles from states or other core components, things like that. So when we spawn some particles, we cannot set the spawning entity as the parent as we want the particles to stay in world space and not track the entity. So for the sake of organization, let's go ahead and quickly create a new game object that we'll just call particles. So in the hierarchy, we can right click and say create empty and we'll just call it particles. Don't forget to reset the position so that it is at the origin. So this game object is going to be used as a container for all the particles that get spawned just to help keep our hierarchy organized. So we need an easy way of finding this particles game object from any of our particle managers or things that need to spawn particles. So let's go ahead and make use of tags for that. So over here on the right, we can go ahead and click on the untagged and select add tag. And then in this inspector window, we can click the plus icon to add a new tag and we'll call this particle container. Remember that when we find things by tag, it needs to be spelt exactly the same way and it is also case sensitive. So go ahead and hit save. We then need to come back to our particles game object and select this as our tag. So we can now reference this particles game object from our particle manager. So let's come back to the code. And in here we can start by declaring a private transform that we'll just call our particle container. We then need to set this reference in the awake function. So we can just type override and that'll give us all the functions that we can override. In this case, we want awake. You can see that it autocorrects to protected override void for us. 
So in here, after base.awake, we can go ahead and say particle container equals game object, and this is capital G game object dot find game object with tag, and make sure it's game object and not game objects. In here, we can then pass the string that is the name of the tag, so particle container. And then after this, we can just say dot transform as we want the transform, not the actual game object. Okay, so now that we have a reference to this particle container, any particles that we spawn, we can set this particle container to be its parent. So let's go ahead and create our first function that'll help us spawn some particles. So after awake, we'll create a public function. And this function is going to return a game object because we'll return the particle that is spawned in case the thing that spawns the particle wants to do something with it. Now, the function name, I'm just going to call it start particles. This function is going to have three input parameters. The first input parameter is a game object, and this is our particle prefab. The second argument is the position where we want to spawn the particle. So this is going to be a vector two, and we'll just call it position. The third argument is going to be the rotation at which we want to spawn the particle. So this is going to be a quaternion, and we'll just call it rotation. Inside this function, we're simply going to instantiate this particle prefab. So we can say instantiate. So the instantiate function has a number of parameters. The first thing we want to pass in is the object that we want to instantiate. So in this case, our particle prefab. The second parameter is the position where we want to instantiate this object. So we can just pass in our position. The third parameter is you guessed it, the rotation at which we want to spawn this object. So we can just pass in the rotation. The fourth parameter is the parent under which we want to instantiate this object. So here we can just pass in our particle container. Now, as you can see, we still have an error, and that's because we're supposed to return the particle that we have spawned. Now, lucky for us, instantiate returns the object that it instantiates. So we can simply say return instantiate like that. Okay, so we've created a very generic start particles function where we have to pass in the particle prefab that we want to spawn. We pass in the position and we pass in the rotation. But luckily, the particle manager is taking care of the organization for us. It is setting the parent of the particle. But what if you want to spawn a particle at the origin of the player or whatever entity is making use of it? We don't want to specify 0, 0 for our position and identity for our rotation. So let's just go ahead and create another function that only takes in the particle prefab and spawns it at the origin and identity rotation for us. So we can just say public game object start particles. And remember that we can name these functions the same thing as long as the input parameters are different. So this is only going to take in a game object that is our particle prefab. Inside this function, all we need to do then is call our original start particles function. And then in here, we can pass our particle prefab for the prefab. And then for the position, we're going to pass in transform dot position. And then for our rotation, we're just going to pass in quaternion dot identity. And remember, again, we want to return the game object. So we just start this with a return statement like that. Okay, cool. So now we have an easy way of quickly spawning a particle without having to worry about position and rotation. Next, let's consider something we do quite often, and that is spawn the particles with random rotation. So again, we can just make use of the first function and pass in a random rotation every time. But that means wherever we call this, we need to generate that random rotation. So let's go ahead and just do that here, make it easier for ourselves later down the line. So after our second start particles function, let's go ahead and declare a new public game object. And this one I'm actually going to call start particles with random rotation. And so in this case, we're going to take in our game object particle prefab and our vector to position. Okay, in here, all we need to do is first generate our random rotation. So we'll say var random rotation equals quaternion dot Euler 
and we only want to generate a random rotation on the z-axis. So we'll pass in 0f for the x, 0f for the y, and then finally for our z, we're going to pass in random.range, and our range is going to be 0f to 360f. Then finally we can say return start particles so we're calling our first start particles function and we'll pass in our particle prefab for the prefab we can pass in our vector 2 position for the position except i just realized that i wanted to create a function that would spawn the particles at a random rotation but at the origin of the entity so we can actually get rid of our vector 2 position and then again just pass in our transform dot position. Now, if you need to spawn something at a random rotation at a specific point, make that function. It's as simple as that. After our transform.position, we'll pass in our random rotation. Okay, so with the particle manager created, we need to now go ahead and actually make use of it. Let's spawn some particles when our entity gets damaged. So let's go ahead and come to our combat core component, which is in our core folder, core components, combat.cs. So our combat core component is going to be responsible for determining what particles are spawned when the entity is damaged. So let's go ahead and start off by creating a serialized field that is going to be a private game object. And this is our damage particles. So we'll go ahead and assign this in Unity in just a second. Let's also go ahead and create a variable for our particle manager. So after our stats, we'll say private particle manager. And we'll just call it particle manager with a lowercase p. Then let's go ahead and create the property. So this is going to be private particle manager, particle manager with an uppercase p. And now another way of writing this that I learned recently is we could just say arrow and then we say particle manager question mark particle manager or core dot get core component and we'll pass in a ref to our particle manager like that. So what this basically does is you say is our lowercase particle manager is this null or not? If it's not, then we're going to return particle manager. And if it is, we're going to do this. So this is basically a single line if statement. So it's essentially just doing exactly the same as what is happening over here. But the reason I learned about this was actually because of Rider. So if we go ahead and turn this up all the way, it tells us that the null coalescing operator um, does not always play well with a Unity engine object. Now, I don't actually quite understand everything that it means here, and we haven't had any issues with it yet, but I assume that there could be some issues at some point. Um, this one doesn't give us any warnings, so I'm pretty happy with it. So if anybody knows what this uh, actually means, please go ahead and reach out and let me know so we can decide what we need to do moving forward. But for now, we'll just keep it like this. It's not causing any issues yet. Let's go ahead and turn this back down to just errors. Okay. So now that we have a reference to our particle manager as well, we can go ahead and spawn some particles. Let's come down to our damage function over here. And after we decrease our health, let's go ahead and say particle manager. And remember, make sure this is the capital P particle manager as we want to set this reference if it has not been set yet. Then we can say question mark dot start particle with random rotation. And in here, we'll just pass in our damage particles. Now, before we can test this, we just have a little bit of setup to do in Unity. So let's come back to there. And now here, what we need to do is actually add our particle manager to our enemies and our player. So let's start with our enemy one, open up the core and go ahead and create a new empty game object. We'll just call this particle manager. Like that, then go ahead and add the particle manager script to it. Now we don't have to repeat this for all of the entities. Let's just go ahead and copy it and then come to our enemy two inside of our core, paste it here, particle manager. And now actually don't forget to reset the position of the transform. And then let's do the same thing for the player. 
it might be in our best interest to actually make the core a prefab at some point as currently the enemies share all the same core components but we'll worry about that later so you can actually see here if i right click on core and say paste as child instead of just paste it resets our transform for us okay so now both our enemies and our player have our particle manager now we just need to come to our combat core component we can just select all three of them and we need to add our damage particles so let's come to our prefabs actually and what i'm going to use for now is just this enemy one hit particle that we created earlier in the series so let's select all three of these again and we'll just drag in our enemy one hit okay let's test it out and see if it works so if we hit our archer yep you can see we spawn some particles perfect and if we get hit yep we spawn some particles as well okay so that is the essentials of the particle manager now this isn't all it's going to be but it's the basics and you guys can work with it from here so for example, if we wanted to play some dust particles when the character is running, we can set up a transform underneath the particle manager called foot position and create a function called start particles at feet or something like that. But that is where we're headed. For now, this is just the basics. In the next part, we're going to work on our death core component that is going to be responsible for determining when an entity dies. And then it'll also be responsible for spawning particles when the enemy dies. If you can remember, Earlier in the series, the enemies would explode into a bunch of chunks and blood. Lovely stuff. Um, so we'll take care of that in the next part. I just wanted to keep this one short and sweet. And so before I go, I would just like to say thank you to all of my supporters and wonderful people over on Patreon. And a huge special thank you to Cody, SM, Madger, Jake, Patrick, Atami, Mike, and Rick. You guys are all absolute mad lads. I hope you all have a wonderful day.